So if you've been really dismal at sowing seeds and you haven't had many results, then this is the gadget that you need. It's called a mini greenhouse. And guys, it is the bomb. It's the gadget that you need. In fact, you can't only have one because you're gonna get so good at this that you're going to want more. So this mini greenhouse has a clear plastic lid and it's got a base which is made out of recycled plastic and you'll note it's got no holes. And this is important and we're gonna pick up on that a little bit later. The lid fits nice and snug on top and it's got these little ventilation holes here which you open and close at different times of the seed's germination. But before we get to using this, let's get some of the other basics right first. So the first thing you're gonna need when you are going to be germinating your seeds is the following. You need one of these blocks. It's called palm peat. This palm peat, you put it into a container, add five liters of water. If you're in a hurry, add five liters of warm water and it uncompresses itself really quickly. Do this about 20 minutes before you want to start your seed sowing. You don't have to use all of this at once. If you're only gonna use a small amount, don't stress, you can just leave it in this container till you're ready for the next lot of seed sowing. So folks, why is this palm peat so important? Well, its pH is perfect for germination. It holds moisture, so all that water that we put in here, the five liters, where's that gone to? Well, it's been sucked up and it gets stored right here. Look at that. And that is the beauty of it. Because seeds, the most important thing that they need is constant moisture. If you're giving them constant moisture, 80% of your problems have gone away and you're 90% of the way there to getting a good germination rate. So next up, you're gonna need a little germinating tray. Now, these are perfect to use. And why? Because they fit ah, so nicely in our little mini greenhouse. If you are going to be sowing a lot more seed or bigger seed, you can also use this big guy over here. It's really important that there are lots of drainage holes here because when you are germinating seeds, wet feet is not a thing that they enjoy. Right, so that guy's over there. We've got our palm peat, and now all we do is we simply take this and add it to our tray. This is all we're using, guys, nothing else. Pop that on. It's good to do it on a nice open surface. I like using a little piece of wood or a wooden float. And you just do little circular motions like this. And what it basically does is gives you a nice smooth surface. Remember it's called seed sowing and not seed bearing. So we need a smooth surface to work on. Next thing we do is as follows. I want you to have a little container handy. Any container as long as it doesn't have any holes. Now you're gonna choose your selected seeds whatever you're going to sow. Now the seeds that you're going to be using in trays are going to be those that on the label will say to you that they need to be sown either directly or in situ. So if you look at the back of the label, it'll show you all the instructions. And the most important aspect of everything, whatever you do, do not sow the entire packet of cabbage seed and that goes for all veggies and all herbs. You sow in two week intervals. In two week intervals, you are insured to have a crop succession throughout the season. Okay, so next up, we're gonna open it up and we are gonna take a few taps of seed onto our hand. So we've got a little bit of seeds, we're gonna add it into our container, all right? We then take a small handful of our palm peat and we add it into this. And then I want you to mix it. Stir it in really well. Mix this in, because what we're doing now, we're distributing the seed nice and evenly throughout our palm peat. Right, once that's done, we then take it, small little handfuls. There we go, in between our fingers and we start working from one side and you just lay it down. You can see where you're adding it because it's not nice and smooth. Moving along methodically across the tray from one side to the other. Once that's done, the next step that you need to do is you need to take some of this stuff. Now this is called vermiculite. Take a look at it. This is a volcanic product. Um, and you can see that if you look really closely here, it's made up of fine, fine little sheets. And these little sheets, look when I squash it, watch here. They don't come back up. 
However, if I add water to this, they expand. One little sheath of vermiculite can hold up to 10 times its capacity in water. Plus, because it's a natural product, it holds warmth and it helps to stabilize temperatures. And remember I said, what are the most important parts about seed sowing? It's constant water, it's light, and it is warmth. Now you're gonna take the vermiculite and across it, I just want you to gently put a thin layer, and this is just a couple of millimeters thick. Looking good, guys. Next step is to take your little piece of wood that you've got, your float, and this is very important. This is when we firm down the vermiculite, our seeds that are mixed with our palm peat, into the palm peat, seeds need to make contact with the soil. So we firm this down. Next step is simply to put the label on. I always like to put the name of the seed company on, who I purchased it from. What is it? It's a cabbage. The variety is drumhead. And of course, the date. Always use an HB pencil, nothing else. HB pencil will not smudge, will not rub off, even when you water it. We take our label, pop it in the side, <laughs> and we are on our way to becoming a seed sowing rock star. Now what we do is we get to put it into our mini greenhouse. Guys, you can see in here, I've got some little bush beans that have been germinated in individual little pots in the, the little greenhouse. These guys are now ready to get planted out into the garden. I'm gonna take these little boys out. Now we take these guys, pop them in, all right? You can see how perfectly that tray fits. The last thing that we've got to do now is simply give it a good watering. And now this will be the only time that you are going to water it until it germinates because the mini greenhouse creates its own little environment. What we want to do to encourage good germination and to make sure that everything is right in here because remember your coconut husk is pH neutral. It has no nutrition, all right? Which is why we want to use something like Start Grow, which is full of the right nutrition to encourage good root development and germination. The dilution rates are really simple, folks. It's one capful into five liters of water. Give this guy a stir and then a good watering. Now, when you're gonna water, folks, if you are using a watering can like I am, please make sure that your rose, is, your rose is clean and then you want to get an even pouring of it and then simply over. You want to water until the water starts pushing through from the base. Ha, that's what I want. You see that? I want it to be literally dripping out here because this is gonna be the next time that I am going to be watering this is going to be when I open my little greenhouse. So, lid goes on, job has been done, close the vents, close the vents because the vents need to be closed because what happens now is that this little greenhouse works just like the greenhouse effect that we learned about at school. Within 10 to 14 days, our little seeds are gonna germinate. As soon as they've germinated, you then open the vents. Okay, and then you will need to resume watering. All right, guys, look at this. Perfect example of what's going on. Here you can actually see the little water droplets. You can see that it's had its own little mini greenhouse happening with evaporation, water rising hitting the top of the greenhouse, forming droplets, and then going back into our seedling tray. Just what we want. So, oh, look at this. What a beauty. These little seeds, they are now ready for the next stage, which is called pricking out, which is when you're gonna transplant them into either a little pot like this, or you can then plant them straight into the garden. But that, folks, makes seed sowing so much simpler. You guaranteed success when you work with the mini greenhouse. Remember, where do you put your mini greenhouse? In a well-lit area. Certainly not direct sun, right? Direct sun would make it way too hot. So in a well-lit area, because that's all that seeds need. So guys, remember to make yourselves even more successful as gardeners, especially with seed germination, get one of these mini greenhouses because it will make the world of difference. And for more gardening gadgets, shop in store or online at builders.co.za. And for more videos like this, to turn you into a green-fingered guru, visit the blog. 
get your boulders and get it done.